I can't feel anything, you know what I mean? This I is incredible. I, like, you feel it? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, yeah. they better not use that. I wish I could use it. I just have to Uh, hi guys, I'm Vincent. I'm a tour guide in London with Wonders of London. Uh, and this is um, the queue uh, to see uh, the Queen lying in state. So we are currently around here, just after the National Theatre, and the queue is supposed to go all the way here. I've been asking the stewards and they say the queue is around London Bridge, uh, but there's no way to know until you get to the back of the queue. Um, but yeah, that's the queue. Uh, so the Queen passed away and she's lying in state until her funeral on Monday. Uh, and people are able to go and pay their respects uh, as she lies in Westminster Hall, uh, which is in the Houses of Parliament next to uh, the Elizabeth Tower, aka Big Ben. Yeah, hi, my name's Tony. Uh, I come from Portsmouth and I'm up here today obviously to pay my respects to the Queen. I was on a, a walk at the time and uh, with a load of colleagues of mine, which are all ex-army colleagues, and we, uh, we heard when we were actually at the end of the walk. 52 years ago, I joined the army as a boy. I signed an oath of allegiance to the Queen and the country and I've honoured that ever since and she means a lot to me so I'm here today. Well as a soldier she always backed us up but as a person she was fantastic. Yeah she looked after I think not only the country but the Commonwealth and in fact I think she was a good guide for the world so it's nice to see that so many people are respecting her for that.
Yeah, my name is Bill Powell. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Uh, we're here to pay our respects to Her Majesty the Queen, and the Queen was head of state of Canada, um, as well as the UK and the other realms. And we wanted to come and show our support for the family and recognize uh, Her Majesty's 70 years of service. I think the fact that as a 25-year-old woman, she was thrust into a role uh, at a time, you know, 1952, that was a very male-dominated world, and her first prime minister was Winston Churchill that she had to face, and she made it a go of it. And the famous words of, she didn't explain, she didn't complain, and never took a step wrong for 70 years. And it's really honoring that legacy. You know, up until two days before her passing, she appointed her 15th prime minister. Uh, so really a lifelong dedicated service and uh, we're, we're here to honor that. We've got a great spot. Uh, my friend here got here on Friday and uh, we're right front and center. We've uh, seen a lot of the preparations that are going on and tomorrow we'll have front row seats for everything as it unfolds. It's great to be in London and to be experiencing this. We're meeting people from all over the world. The mood is, is a very positive one. I think this is a lasting legacy to Her Majesty. And people are, are um, really soaking in the atmosphere of this, this uh, memorial event. Uh, yeah, my name's Tony and this I'm is my wife Sue. We've come down from uh, from Amersham, so it's not too far. Uh, it's probably about 30 miles out of London. Yeah, we, we, we joined the queue uh, just after midnight and have just been in uh, to see the coffin now. So it was about 13 and a half hours. 14 and a half, 14 and a half hours, sorry. Yeah. So what were you doing in that, in that time? <laughs> 
<laughs> trying to stay awake. Walking. Walking. Trying uh, to find a coffee. Yeah, trying to find coffee, trying to find food, chatting to people in the queue. Um, yeah, just generally trying to keep yourself going. Looking at all the landmarks and views along the way because it followed a really, it was a lovely walk with lots of lovely views. And London looks great at night <laughs> with the ta that, um, with Tower Bridge lit up uh, and the Shard lit up as well, also in pink. So London, look, London looks really good at night. Beautifully quiet as well. So could you tell me, so once you eventually your wait ended and you walked in to pay your respects to the Queen, how did it feel? What, what were you feeling in that moment? Um, I, 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 I guess it's uh, it, it's a little bit um, you, you get a little bit emotional about it, you know. It's very um, humbling. It's, it's I found very, it very it, humbling. Yeah, it's very humbling. Um, we've never been, never been that close close to the Queen, um, but there's so much history in there, you know, that it does uh, it, it does affect you even if you didn't necessarily expect that it would. We were really fortunate to see the uh, changing of the guard while we were there as well. So that was uh, interesting to see how that was carried out. Um, I, I, I mean, obviously, uh, we, we can see all around us today the number of people that have come down, uh, the level of respect that she obviously commands throughout the, throughout the world. Um, you know, a number of leaders coming in, and when you're in the queue, you can hear so many different nationalities talking because so many people wanted to, to come pay their respects. And you know, I think that I think that does affect us all. Uh, I, I think it's set up this country very well. Um, the way she's always positioned the country, the way she's always presented the, uh, our country. So, you know, I think she's going to be a very, very tough act to follow. Um, and yeah, I think her legacy is going to be very, very strong, and it's, it's, it's going to last for it's going to last for a good long time. And King Charles has has got a bit of an act to follow. I loved her warmth and her humour, and that the fact she treated everybody she met in the same way. Everybody was equals as far as she was concerned, and she just set a shining example for everybody to follow.
The Father. Thanks be to God. The second hymn. pray that we may be given grace to live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. a long reign. The gun carriage awaits at the Great West Door. St George's Chapel in Windsor awaits her arrival this afternoon, where alongside her beloved husband, sister and parents, she will finally be laid to rest.
Uh, so it was Mark and Sandy Smith from Devon. Uh, we travelled down yesterday, uh, stayed in Reading, um, thought that that might be a good idea, considering the train is only 25 minutes away. However, there was a fatality which took us an hour and 20 minutes to get here. Um, so we uh, soldiered on, didn't we? Um, unfortunately, not to get right into the mouth, but of course it's... It's very um, difficult and clouds like this, but um, it's, I don't know, it's quite an emotional day, really, isn't it? It's an emotional day, but the atmosphere is amazing. Uh, yeah. And of course, we're here for the Queen, just because her legacy leaves us with something we can all learn from. This woman was strong, amazing, loyal from day one. We can learn from that. Everybody can learn from that. Amazing. And you've got to be here to say thank you. Yeah. So and that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Beautiful. Absolutely. The hymns were beautiful. So everything was perfection. And you can hear, a, you, know, you can hear a pin drop in here when we had the two-minute yeah. silence, which is very respectful. And, and the, uh, yeah, it's just, the, just the nice gun emotional gun feeling, wasn't it? Yeah, really, really lovely. Yeah. Proud to be British. I love, well, I love the pageantry anyway, and um, you know the soldiers. It just. The military style is just is something that the horses. Yeah, it always takes you in. It's like okay, this is amazing. You know, the precision, the um, uh, no mistakes for anything. It's just amazing. It's lovely. The choir will now sing the Russian Kontakian of the Departed, an ancient Kiev chant. Yep, uh, my name is Edward. Uh, I'm actually uh, French and English, uh, so I came from France just a week ago to see my partner, but uh, I'm here also for the funeral. Uh, my name is Mark. I live in London uh, and uh, <laughs> I work in uh, I work in London here as well. I'm, I'm Franco-British. Uh, so it was quite massive, you know, so many people. I, I guess like London recently has had a lot of like royal sort of events, you know, Jubilee and stuff like that, and I've been involved in a few of them. And, always so many masses of people and stuff so it's always very impressive uh, c coming from a French perspective it was very well organized and very civil uh, uh, it would have been absolutely yeah. chaotic in our own country but yeah, it would have been completely uh, but no 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 it's very impressive there was a huge uh, a, a very large organization put into place very easy to get to Hyde Park I mm. actually thought it would be way more chaotic than it actually was clearly a good a good embodiment of uh, British values <laughs> <laughs> whether it be the queue last week or, or this this absolutely. today <laughs> obviously very very like solemn and very emotional um, I thought the the, the hymns were, were, you know, were really beautiful um, I was especially per personally like very um, uh, emotionally sort of affected by the two minute long silence which was pretty much respected you know where we were which was really uh, quite impressive and again sharing of British British values and respect so maybe you wouldn't have that in France um, and and the, then the, some of the speeches and the, the, the doing the, the funerals were, were quite were quite good um, so overall you know I think it was a, a really good funeral both both emotional and solemn but also positive in, in some ways you know? I, I would agree with a lot of what he said uh, I did think that it was a, a very beautiful service it was there were clearly a lot of religious references and whatnot so if you weren't Christian uh, or if you don't have a Christian upbringing it would have been a, a different experience for you but still there was also a lot of uh, a lot of more general messages and principles being put forward those of her legacy uh, her sense of duty the idea of a common good of unity um, it was a very interesting uh, reference as well made to the idea of that we will see each other again yes which I think had a lot of uh, different meanings to it not just of course after lockdown after COVID but also that we can find each other there's a sense of bringing people together I thought it was it was very interesting and uh, I think it was very well done. Uh, I also do think that the messages were probably for those who are less inclined towards the monarchy, those messages were probably more contestable, but nevertheless it was a very, very respectful and overall, uh, I would say, rather inclusive event that a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds could, could identify with on a certain level. I, I think, you know, obviously we live in very divisive times, uh, Brexit and, you know, <clears throat> recently as they've even talked about culture wars and stuff like that. Um, but 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 it seemed, although it's not always shared throughout the UK, but it seemed that for, for a brief moment, in terms of a send-up, there was a, an idea of like unity, you know, of together to, togetherness beyond 
our individual interest or desires and stuff, but something the whole community, the nation, coming together and, and, and many parts of the world as well. That's showing up her legacy in general. Uh, someone that, as Edward was saying, you know, always was was served and, and fulfilled her duty. Was very very involved in that and and in, in principle of service to her nation. And uh, and uh, hopefully that can sort of insp inspire other people to, to do the same, especially in a time where people are more self-absorbed and think more about themselves. Uh, you know, like I, I think that someone like the Queen and hopefully the royal family in general, if they continue to, to follow her on that follow her on that on that route. Um, can it can inspire people and like, uh, you know, to get involved themselves and serve others as well? Uh, I've, I've got a slightly different view uh, in general on the institution of the monarchy. I myself said to Mark and to many others, if I was coming here, it was not so much out of deference for the monarchy, but rather out of deference for the head of state, uh, embodying you know the what you would say is the the leader of this country, uh, regardless of who she actually represents. Uh, otherwise. Uh, as a civic moment and a historical moment. So I, for one, tend to look at this as uh, a period for reflection. And uh, uh, I really do think that it is the end of a chapter. Uh, Queen Elizabeth was a particularly uh, uh, liked and, 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 and popular queen compared to many others in history and in many other countries. But I do think that we also need to question at this particular point what the monarchy means to us today. Uh, what's its place, if it has a, a public value, if it should just become a private thing uh, uh, for the monarchs in their own circle. And I do think that it's, it's a, it is the right moment to have a more proper debate on uh, the role of the monarchy in Britain today and for the future. Um, Only that I disagree with him. <laughs> no, 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 nothing. That I disagree no. with him. <laughs> no, yeah, nothing, not much more.